Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm here for another grinding talk, because it's finally time to do what I was doing last time and pick up where I left off, left off last time when I was grinding and talking, which is grinding for Heroes Proof, which you will find by inside the lotto for the this season, I guess. So that's going to be today's video. I just need an excuse to make a video while also just having grinding in the background. I figured this is the best way to do it, so it's going to be a very chill video as I kind of just sit back. You'll see footage of grinding going on. I can't see it right now because I'm actually doing... Um, I'm done, I record these first and then I just put up the footage of it because I'm like, well, you know, there's only so much you can react to of me going, man, Abuki really do be going for it. So, And that is the unit I use mostly for my grinding now because Abuki, Summer Abuki is really good and with the how high HP the final note is, she's really good at destroying that. But I also believe I, you might be seeing footage of this of me going out and doing the other grind events as well. Just because I need to get those done as well so I can pick up the apples. Obviously I spend all my grinding on the final node because I'm able to actually grind it. Though, I would be curious to see your, how many people are doing uh, what node. I assume with the 200% attack one it should be fairly easy enough. Or 100%. I actually broke mine down to make it 200%. Which is going to be real bad whenever I get around to recording those videos uh, with my brother for the challenge quests. Because <laughs> only one unit will be, basically we'll put all our eggs into a single basket. And if that unit falls, well that's going to be unfortunate. Unless I'm able to, through my grinding, pick up uh, copies of additional um, damage seeds. Which, to be fair, I've been able to get at a fairly good rate the ones that drop the, the lotto currency, but none for giving attack up. Usually it's the other way around, but maybe because maybe they feel the fact that um they feel the fact of what I did, and they said, eh, actually I think it'd be better if we just hard punish you on this one." Which I say, "Hey, you know what? Fair enough." So yeah, I've been grinding a whole bunch. Uh, besides that, what else has been going on? Well, besides the big thing that I want to talk about, <laughs> I went to um I went to go do. Uh, the pre-release for Magic the Gathering's Foundations, which was really fun. It was a whole buttload of fun um, in terms of things that are not just grinding for Go. Because besides grinding for Go, I've been grinding for Go and then also getting up to date on Zenlo Zone Zero. But in terms of other game stuff that I've been doing, it was the Magic the Gathering set, which felt pretty good, uh, especially because everyone there, there was definitely an energy of, the, I need this right now. Um, everyone wanted just to have fun. It's been pretty down bad times, for sure, but everyone kind of getting together to be like, hey, can we just have fun? Can we just play this game that we all like, even though we also see a kind of scary trend going on, what with the failure of the Marvel Secret Lair and some of the decisions made within the game, which is, I think, something that is largely intensive to a lot of, um... Uh, fandoms actually like if you look at Fago, it's especially there with Fago. um what with its subsect of people who are only into fate and hate Fago and are like whatever man if our visual novel uh was allowed to be here today it would be popping off not knowing that it would in fact not be popping off um at all because it had an entire anime season um it just doesn't compare to Fago, which is not true because uh, <laughs> as i fight back honkai is gonna get that collab and hopefully that will do a whole bunch i actually would be curious to see how that goes because i would actually love it if it did so well that the Fago devs went like you know what we should do that um fate uh, we should do something with fate stay night for the love of god We've had Fuyuki in the game since the, the debut, and we've always said, hey, something's going weird about Fuyuki, and we've never actually addressed it, so at some point it'd be nice, but I'm going on. Point is, is that if you stay in within a fandom long enough, um, you see, you start to see only negativity, and it starts to really bring you down, and it starts to make you think, like, hey, how can I actually continue with this? And sometimes those feelings are true. Like, I felt that when or Collection went, like, two weeks without releasing something after every other, um, when it, when I went for the, when I went for the monthly, like, let's see what's going on for this month, and there was no update, I was like, oh no, 
that's a bad sign, and then bad things happened afterwards. So, there are signs that you can see within a fandom that things might be going into a very bad direction, but there's really nothing that you can do to stop it. And the best you can kind of do at that point is to continue to play your game and have fun with it, because a lot of the time, when you spend time talking about something, you forget that the thing you like or the thing you love is actually super fun to play. And that's what it felt like with Magic where everyone was always down on everything um, because obviously the secret layer stuff had happened the, the going away from a lot of magic sets to going more universes beyond which is still something where I was like well I really love the world of Bloomborough and I would have loved to return to it and then they tell you like hey we're actually going to be returning to less worlds yeah, going forward in magic and you go okay well this is not what I wanted this is not as Spider-Man's cool, but also I would have really liked it if I could play magic cards with the magic dudes I have come to love and stuff like that. So when you have a lot of thoughts like that going into your head, and then obviously the scalping issue with the secret layer, which holy shit, I fucking hate scalpers so much. I'm going to be able to, thankfully a friend was able to pick up an extra copy, and she is going to uh, sell me that one so I can actually get my Wolverine and Storm without having to pay $200 for both of them. Because um, that's how much it's going for, just blind boxing of both Storm and Wolverine and non-foil. Thank you, Wizards, for printing. Mechanically, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Mechanically unique. The only way to get these stupid cards is to actually <laughs> buy this stupid secret layer. And it was limited print and nothing but scalpers were able to get in because there was a way to bypass the site so you could enter early and fuck, man. It was really bad. So I needed something that where you could just sit down and play. And it felt pretty good to just do that because Foundations is a fantastic set. Cleverly designed to be able to let new players come in. Very simple in terms of its mechanics, but at the same time still let you do really cool things. Like, I was able to make a, um, a Hydra with 40 plus 1 plus 1 counters that had first strike and trample. And that was a lot of fun <laughs> for me. Um, and for the opponents who had to be like, oh my god, I have to stop this immediately. And they did have ways to stop it. Well, one of them did, and the other one was a new player, so he didn't. So that was a lot of fun. But besides that, what else have I been doing? Working a lot, man. Fuck. The holiday seasons are here, and work is about to pick up for me. Um, it should probably, hopefully, slow down a little bit before Thanksgiving, and then pick right up till Christmas season until... What's the right way of saying this? Because the, the job I do is uh, tied with movies, a lot of the times you have to look to the box office and see, like, okay, so when this movie is in theaters and it's taking advantage of almost all the movie theaters, I don't get much work done in terms of what I do, um, because all the screenings are filled up with movies people actually want to see um because we test movies at my job so there's nothing i can do so therefore it's going to be an easier week um and maybe there'll be other work to do but for the most part it's going to be a pretty chill week um and that's what happens during christmas time is that during christmas time that's when they rush in um to show a bunch of movies that people think are going to be either Oscar worthy or going to be movies that are people will enjoy during the Christmas season. Um, it used to be that this is the, the the time where we would set aside because Star Wars was coming out, so everyone needed to take theaters away. No one, no, no, every theater was going to be playing Star Wars, so there was no point to do anything. So two weeks before Christmas, basically everyone was free to like just go. Um, that doesn't happen anymore, obviously, because uh, they don't make Star Wars movies. Well, they plan to make Star Wars movies, and we'll see if people will stop being stupid long enough to actually go see them. Which I think they will, probably. Um, good or bad. <laughs> Whatever, man. I've dealt with six... No, it's not six in a row, because they're... If you count the main episode series. I'm definitely one of the ones that... Uh, I think I was in middle school when those prequels came out, and I've always held the notion that they are terrible movies that are just kind of fun to watch. Um, because it's one crazy man giving you a crazy vision. So even though everything about it screams to you to say, this is so stupid, it's one man's stupid vision, so it's easier to get behind it versus a corporate stupid decision. Where you hear, why is it like this? It's because the stupid corporation didn't think of it, and you go like, oh god. 
this sucks. And then you go to the prequels and you go like, why is it like this? It's like, it's because one dumb man decided that he's going to make it this way. And you're like, okay, <laughs> I guess. At least I know there was a person behind this and not an entire blank entity that I can uh, get angry at. But I digress. Um, so yeah, my, things should hopefully calm down around that time, and hopefully that means that there'll be plenty of work for me to do so I can stockpile my money and get everything up in order. In terms of other stuff I have to do, there's also a lot of Fago things I have to prepare for, video stuff that I have in my mind that I have to do. I should have, there's gonna be a pair of them that are gonna be releasing hopefully pretty soon, one looking at, like I do every year, I think it's the same basic three every year that I try and do, one is a, how much money not much money. <laughs> How much money will you make off of Go this year? Zero dollars is the answer for most people. Um, how much uh, St. Quartz and tickets are coming for the year? What do I actually plan for to summon for in 2025? And then the, the GSSR video, which every year... I did okay last year with the GSSR. Not last year. I did the last GSSR video I did fine with. I'm never happy with my uh, GSSR videos. The reason is, is that the GSSR itself um, is very hard to talk about because I know where the good units are. Like, obviously, it's Castoria, it's Vich, it's Oberon, and it's Summer Scotty this year as well. The problem is, is that sometimes those the banners that they are are on are terrible and then you try and explain some units and you have to be very careful with your words sometimes whenever you're trying to explain a unit because sometimes you'll think a unit is bad and i've gone through this a couple times where i will at least hear someone out when i say something um if you ever wonder why i say for the most part a lot of units are good it's because one i do think a lot of them are good and the other part is when you call someone bad that's when <laughs> the strike force comes for you like um I think I called uh, Cleopatra pretty bad, because I think she is bad. Um, she's a very old style unit though, um, and I wish that she got a buff to make her better to fit into the more modern day setting. And because there's a lot of people very dedicated to their, to their unit, like Cleopatra for example, there's an entire subset of people who have figured out the goo, who have figured out the sauce, who have figured out, no, if you run... Cleopatra this exact specific way she can put in some really good work and she can do an amazing job and she can show off and I think that's wonderful and I think it's beautiful it's a great thing that Fago can do is it can give you the tools to make a single unit who maybe seems a little bit bad and with the proper setup they can super duper shine but that doesn't change the fact that in a vacuum I still think that the amount of work that the amount of work that you put into her is more than what you would put with a good unit. For example, Arjuna Altar, not that hard to make good. Very basic in terms of, how do I know this unit is good? Because you can probably give him the wrong craft essences and the wrong setup sometimes, and he will still put in really good work. If you do that with someone with Cleo, absolutely destroys her. Doesn't, I know it's weird to say where it's like, if you put them in a bad <laughs> team, Obviously, Cleo is going to look bad, and Arjuna Altar is still going to kind of look pretty good, even though they're in a bad team. And it's a weird way to judge units, but I think that's the easiest way to kind of judge units. Because a lot of uh, Fago units, if you put them in the perfect condition, they will always shine out. Because that's the game just allows you to kind of do it that way. So in my mind, when I call a unit bad, I have to look at them at those kind of scenarios. If I think of, I think of a new player and I think of, okay, they're not going to have the greatest team in the world. They're not going to have the synergies to pull it off, and it's going to take them a while to get there. How long does it theoretically take to them get to get to that level? So with Cleo, it's pretty easy to say, like, she's a very old unit. I don't think she's very good because over the years that I've used her, it's been difficult for me to actually get her up and fully running. But because of the language I use of calling her specifically bad, what I should have just stuck with is just saying, okay, she's an interesting unit, but she's also a very old unit, and that's the proper way of doing it, because I ended up <laughs> making someone mad who said, like, you just don't understand, so I said, okay, you know what, please explain to me your reasoning behind Cleo being good. And he did, he did a fantastic job, and he showed it to him, and I'm like, okay, you know what, in those specific scenarios, I agree with you then. Um... And then because I was more agreeing with what they said, they finally, you know, they backed down and they're like, 
okay. Um, but you know what? You're also right. I do think that she could use a little bit more of a buff, which is the, <laughs> which was like what I was saying all along. But because of the language I used, it makes someone angry, so they can't see the rest of the point. Um, so I always try and be very careful to say something specific about a unit. The only time they'll ever outright say a unit is terrible is when it's a community known thing that this unit is bad. Uh, for example, Sigurd and Arthur, I love you guys because those are the easiest units you can call bad and no one will call you out for it. Um, Arthur maybe is a little bit different now post buff. I'd have to look at him and see how the community still feels about him. Um, but for the most part, those are the two easiest units you can point to and say like, these are bad. <laughs> these dudes are really bad. And it probably helps if they're dudes because if it's a dude, very few will defend them except for dudes who are like, man, th that's my dude right there, but I agree. But if you call a female character bad, you're in for a very, very harsh talking to. And at least for me, I'm willing to admit when I'm wrong about something. And I'm willing to learn and I want to see it for myself. And I see like, you know what, if this person thinks this dude is good, let me see their reasonings behind it. And a lot of the times I'll be like, that's very interesting. This is a unit I don't really use. And I put it into the back of my mind to remember to talk about it the next time I have to talk about that unit. Um, and in very rare cases, do I ever disregard what someone says? I think the closest I ever got was when someone said, I think Morgan is better than Arjuna Alter. And the reasoning was because Morgan has 20% extra NP. Uh, but that's not what they told me. Um, the reason they thought so is because you can easier uh, loop with just Vich with Morgan. Because she gives herself 50% and then the two Viches, it's, it's easier. Um, because when you get all your abilities back, she'll get 50% NP instead of 30%. But uh, what he said was, <laughs> Arjuna Alder needs a buff because 30% isn't enough to get back on NP. Um... So they went into this whole diatribe about how Arjuna Ultra's bad and then how he never was able to function well. And it took like multiple people talking to him where it was like, I think he said like he's overrated, let me tell you this. And then enough people were like, hey man, very politely, can you tell us why you feel that? You're the first person to ever say this. And when I got to their reasoning, I definitely disagreed in the idea of like, okay, well obviously Arjuna Alter, sure, you can say the fact that he, need, he needs mana loadings maybe sometimes to get the effort at the beginning part and then you also need Oberon. I can see that as a negative of saying like, okay, that's a high investment character compared to Morgan who just needs Morgan and a Vich, but there's more team options there. But I still heavily disagreed that Morgan was not um, was one better and then also that he was overrated. I think Arjuna Alter is for the most part correctly rated. Um, and I think which one is better come, kind of comes down to preference. If you are someone who like the big number, then obviously um, Arjuna Alter is gonna be your dude. And I like the big number. So I like Arjuna Alter better than Morgan, even though I think I end up using Morgan more than Arjuna Alter for the most part. But I think it's mainly because Arjuna Alter feels too uh, easy to win. And then also, I also end up using a lot more arts units than I use Buster units. But if there's a Buster unit that I just want something to die, I go with Arjuna Alter. And he will always be my go-to when it comes to that. If it's a if, I, if it's a Buster unit where I'm like, I'm looking to kind of goof around and make a silly team, it's Morgan for the most part. Um, so it, in my mind she ends up being like second and he ends up being first but it's like it's weird to say like oh my god this seven star um uh steak completely trashes the six and a half star steak it's like that's no both of these taste amazing and are amazing <laughs> But because of the words a lot of people use, it ends up making it sound like actually the six and a half star steak is trash. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I have to. That's why I don't like doing my GSSR videos because I'm always like, am I using the correct language? Am I to a new player coming off giving information that will let them know that the unit that they potentially could get that is next to the really good unit. Like, actually, let me see for GSSR this year. Can I can do that? For go, uh, I can look at that real quick. Here's a spoiler into my mind as we continue to grind and talk in the background. I don't know who's still left here uh, watching this, but if you're still here, 
thanks for sticking by. You should leave a like and comment. I've gotten really bad at telling people to subscribe to the channel, so for the first time ever <laughs> in a while, I think my uh, channel is basically plateaued at, at staying at the same uh, basic rate of it, so I have to remember to actually get back to it. Which I will soon when I actually release the bigger videos, but for, for these kind of videos, I, I never like yeah. saying it, just because it's like... Um, I just wanted to get to the video, man. When it's a big thing that I know it's gonna reach a lot of people, like, what does it really make sense for me to always say like to the same 200 people that watch one of these videos, or even if this even gets to 200, to be honest, to the same 50 people <laughs> who end up clicking on this video, and to the 10 that actually make it to the 20 minute mark? Do you guys need to hear every single time? I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm I'm, I'm an old head when it comes to some of the uh. Some of the old YouTube stuff. I don't know. I always, in my mind, said, if you want to go... Okay, here's an example. Uh, for the new GSSR. Um, let's say... Okay, so in the banner this year, we have, for single target defensive NPs, we have Summer Saber, we have Moriarty, and we have Super Ryan. Okay. That one's actually very easy, because it's like, okay, obviously the big one on here would you would either want Super Orion, or you're a big fan of uh, Saber, and therefore you want her summer version, and therefore the odd man out on this one, unless you're me or my brother, is Moriarty. Because Moriarty does have his fans for sure, but it's probably not on the same level. He's not as good as either Super Orion or... Actually, is he? He might be okay. He, might, he actually might be good. And this is another thing, is it? <laughs> for the most part, I have to talk to people who actually I see what people have to say about Moriarty before I can actually go in there and do it. I know he has, like, evil synergies and stuff like that, but it's tough when it's a unit I don't know for the most part. That's right, he can grant people the evil center. Okay, this is actually a bad example, because I think all three of these units would be happy with me. With, obviously, the... if you, It all depends on how much you actually like Moriarty. Um... Is how good you would on being Okay, let me go to another one. Another example. This is a good example. Ishtar, Gilgamesh, uh, Jean, Summer, and uh, Say Sh uh, Shodagon. Um, there are three fan favorites on this banner, and the other one is Sai. So my advice would always be Ishtar is good, Gilgamesh is good, and Jean, Summer is good. And depending on how bummed you're going to be about pulling Sai is how if you should summon on this one or not. If you are, if you hate her with the absolute biggest fiber of your being, then obviously you shouldn't summon on this. Because if you get her, you're gonna be salty and you're gonna be mad. And, <laughs> and that's how a lot of people get mad at the GSSR because they pick on banners where it's like, no, I want Gilgamesh. I'm like, I understand that, but you absolutely hate one of the units on here. So if you're like laser focused in that if you get them, you're just gonna be angry. It doesn't matter. Yeah, and then that, that and her unit isn't the greatest. That's the other problem is that even though I like uh, Sai a whole bunch, the biggest problem with her is that she's not uh, on the same level as the others. So it's the ultimate feels bad for the most part. Um, I can look at the Castoria one real quick. The Castoria one is also a big one because it's like Castoria, Oconi, uh, uh, I keep wanting to call her Iris, that is not her name. It's Ilya. <laughs> Scotty, Merlin, and Miss Crane. It's a lot of units, so it's like hard to actually go for Castoria, but if you'd be satisfied with any one of those, I think you'd probably be okay something on that one. Uh, oh, this is a Berserker single target offensive, Kintoki, Mysterious Heroine X Altar, and Hijikata. This all 100% comes down to, are you going to be happy with getting Hijikata? If the answer is yes, then yeah. Holy shit, the Berserker AoE offensive MP is fucking insane. Arjuna Alter, Ibuki, uh, Su Summer Ibuki, uh, Sen no Rikyo, uh, Raiko, uh, Summer Musashi. Bless you, boy. Morgan? That's a crazy banner. I should, yeah, I, I need to look at this deeper and formulate my thoughts and stuff like that. But that was my go to, <laughs> there's my go to reaction on seeing them. When I looked at that one, I said, God damn, this is like almost all, this is basically all hits. Because either you hit one of the four, which is the the big, the, the Berserker for Buster, the Berserker for Arthur, the Berserker for, for Quick, or you hit Morgan, or you hit Raiko, who will eventually get buffed, or you hit uh, Musashi, who eventually will get the pass the the upgrade that will let her deal a shit ton of damage to Saber. I think this is like the easiest banner to just summon on and be satisfied, as long as you're happy with any one of these units. I wonder if this is actually the banner I summon on. That's another deeper question I have to ask myself. But anyway... 
that's what I've been preparing for a lot of videos. <laughs> so that's a look into the, the, my video making process, I guess. In terms of the grinding and talking, I think uh, where I think I'm about good to stop it right here. Let me like we got been going for a good 25 minutes. I never know how long to make these grinding talks. If you're still listening to this, feel free to tell me if you prefer what like longer grinding talks. Because for the most part, grinding talk is going to be a lot of me like, hey man, I just need to grind and I just want to talk for a bit. That's what these are, for the most part, is that there's a lot of grinding in for Go, and if unless I do these for a video, I'm never going to do them on my own. I just got lucky in the fact that uh, for Lotto, I have to do these on my own. I don't really have a choice. But anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for letting me uh, talk. If you have anything to say about anything I talked about here, feel free to leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys in the next video. You guys have a good day out there. Till next time, peace out!